Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. We're here with our co-host, Anel Vale. Anel, thanks Anel, for Anel Vail, Anel. thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ortega, being with nice us. to see you again. Good to see you. All right. Now, the title of today's show is No Free Will Isn't a License to Do Whatever We Want. This is a very important show because so many people say, well, we've got to believe in free will because if we didn't have free will, everybody would just do whatever they wanted. Civilization would collapse. There would be no <laughs> rules, no order, no nothing. All right. Let's start. Now, like before we go into this, why are we doing this show? This is so important for many, many reasons. Uh, people are completely wrong about the basic nature of free will. You know, that people believe they have, a, like, about 80%, I think you think, have a... So, most of society believes they have something they just don't have. Yes, and... And, and like, it's changing your view on this subject, making people understand we do not have free will, can make a, for a much more compassionate understanding and you know less envy less acrimony you know all that stuff will go less resentment less blame less blame self blame less suicide less will all there'll still be a little bit but not as severe it'll be more muted or yeah the other thing is like instead of blaming ourselves and each other we might want to blame the universe or god well, we can pragmatically blame each other but we won't be condemning people and stigmatizing people as evil devils and going to hell for the rest of time and that's a huge you know the butterfly effect says that something on a 0.001% chain can mushroom out or expand out and change the whole world completely different, you know. Okay. A lot more happiness. And another reason why this show is important is because, like, basically, pretty much the entire world, because, like, there was a yeah. survey that said, like, that 70% of people believe in free will. I have a feeling, even in those countries, like, where they say they don't, I have a feeling they probably act as if they do, I think. But the idea is, like, basically, reality, life, the world is a movie, and... That if we believe in free will, we're completely deluded about the fundamental nature of why we do things. You touched on it last on the last show. The most important reason why it matters is that we're human beings. We came to Earth. We're a species. We speak. We have philosophy. We have arts. We have music. Let's just get this right. I mean, this is ridiculous. We're here in 2012. We're on this planet. Even if there's almost no benefit to either side, we're here. We might as well get it right. I mean. We're all, when I say right, I mean correct. The truth is we don't have a free will. The people need to know the truth right. about their wills. Most people, when they look very carefully at themselves and analyze their life and rewind it, it's so obvious there's no free will. So I know you got a 100 reasons why life is better but without a free will. But the number one reason to me is truth is a beautiful thing, and people would prefer the truth about things than being lied to. And living in a magical world, in a fantasy world that you have free will, is just way off the mark. So the answer is why this is important is let's just get this right. Absolutely. Please. Truth. Absolutely. I mean, it's going to come out anyway. The tipping point is coming. Okay. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, happening. it's happening. Yes, it's happening. Just like, let's show this again. This is like, this is last year. New yeah, scientist, we are not acting alone. New scientists. There's tons a, a of weekly, books um, in the last magazine, two years. Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> that scientific American mind. There's books galore. Uh, Everything is changing. Oh yeah. Sam Got Harris. This. Free will. <laughs> I mean, come on. The Why are we on change. cable access? This is like the Newer Testament this says there's no Anel's free will. New book, yes. I can't take credit for it. But I mean, to answer your question, we came to Earth. We, we have to get this right. It's just what something we, it's like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I mean, it's the truth. It's I mean, the biggest thing ever. How do we start this show? it feel better to pursue truth? I mean, yeah. Would you want me to lie to you about something or tell you the truth? The truth uh, the just truth. feels better. God, yeah. Right. Absolutely. So if it doesn't happen now or this decade or next, if we went in a time machine, even maybe 20 years, nobody's going to be stupid enough to believe they have a free will. I mean, this whole thing is co is collapsing. I mean, this illusion is bursting like a bubble right. or whatever. And here's the thing. It is, it is extremely stupid that we don't understand this. Now, here's the thing. We can't take it's, blame for what's taking so it's long. It's not our stupidity. The it's, Internet helps. It's the universe. Yeah. It's the. I mean, like, why would the universe be so stupid as to have us believe this? It sells this newspapers illusion. and news stories and songs. I don't know. All right. So, all right, now, before we get into, like, why free will isn't a license to do whatever we want... First define free will. Go with that. Let's do this. All right, so basically... Because it could be some first-time watchers. Right. When we, when people say that they have a free will, they are basically saying that what we think, feel, and do is completely up to us, that nothing that is not in our control is either choosing for us or taking part in that choice... They're saying that a free will would give us the, the ability to override yeah, that's good, our right? conditioning, you know, override and genetics, our genetics. And genetics. 
there another popular um how we were raised world, yeah. right is like that we could have chosen to do, do otherwise whatever we think choose huh. we could have chosen otherwise yeah, okay. and the show last, me how to do that yeah. right i know and the last the last definition is we're ultimately morally responsible and okay. wait one reason why it becomes a much better world for me personally or everybody out there watching is that you no longer self you never you don't blame yourself anymore for your past stupid and silly mistakes we're all innocent and been vindicated that we if we don't have a free will you could have said this to the girl you could have bought that stock you could have driven left and not fall you know gotten an act i mean you couldn't have done otherwise so you're all innocent for every mistake you know, even if you committed a crime fundamentally you couldn't have done otherwise that's so important how many people again we've got a so you're not going to hell you're not going to heaven you're just you know I, we don't know what happens after but you can't blame yourself or other people but for pragmatically you can blame other people about what's fair and suing them whatever but yourself is where the big benefit comes in that you no longer hate yourself we should get rid of 99 percent of suicides right away when you get rid of self-blame yeah. there may be the guy who kills himself for a higher cause for islam or whatever but as far as self-hatred and wanting to die because you did something wrong or bad that's out that goes away and think of regrets Thank God. a lot regrets, of people, yeah. the older we get you know we say to ourselves oh wow i should have stayed on that job i should have stayed married to that person i should have like done this in the past and a lot of times these are big things a lot that people carry these things with them for decades sometimes you know i did such or i'm such, such an asshole because i said that to my boss that day and he fired i should never have done that right right and like people like again they it weighs on, on yeah, them for it's decades terrible. so the, as i used soon, to be the same way so i figured i didn't have a free will yeah there you go it all vanished all right okay it's a beautiful thing it, it is yes it, it's evolutionary it's the biggest thing the way we start our show is like uh, a philosopher john searle was asked by a fellow philosopher of this magazine Stephen blackmore um what what you know to talk on the prospect of free will being illusion he said Demonstrating that free will is an illusion would be bigger than Einstein, Copernicus, Who said that? Uh, John Searle. Who cares what he said? Eminent no, I care what we the said. The reason I, I say it because it him? makes sense. This guy? Oh, no, no, no. John, no. John Searle is an, he's a, an But we don't need to philosopher. quote other people. We know, no, no. and everybody knows, it's the biggest thing ever. Yes, but... I mean, the whole way you look at him, everything will change. Dude, according to him, <laughs> this demonstrating to the world that free will is an illusion is bigger than Einstein, Copernicus, Newton, Galileo, and Darwin. Okay, this is huge. Now, the reason we can say this, like, without being arrogant or boastful is we don't have anything you know it's not up to us yeah i'm this just along for the doing. ride all right this is so anyway this is big this so is so believing important. in free will is nonsensical incoherent and illogical right yes all oh, right. absolutely tell them why all right. no 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 all right or how? We, go we, ahead all right um now again we see I, if i had a free will i wouldn't keep interrupting him i knew you liked <laughs> that line go ahead all right now the reason basically this show is about like as we you know don't as we understand we don't have a free will that just doesn't give us license to do whatever we want right. but before we get into that just very briefly the reason we don't have a free will is because everything has a cause mm. you know and that means that all of our decisions have a cause and there's a cause to that and even if things didn't have a cause everything would be random that doesn't give us free will in it all right <laughs> so let's get so why can't all right why can't we do whatever we want the main the main reason is because things have consequences. You know, what we do has consequences. So, so go expand on We can't do what we want. First of all, I believe it, this is something I came up with in my book, the Newer Testament, uh, is that we have a fairness imperative. I mean, if, you, if everybody did what they wanted, they would be taking what I would say is energy from – say you murdered someone or stole something. So I like to make a big uh, – an obvious choice here – not a choice, but like – a chasm between the pragmatic and the fundamental. So if you do whatever you want, you're going to pragmatically be put in jail. If you do whatever you want, I mean, you might murder someone. I doubt you would really want to do that, but you might steal money from somebody and not pay your rent. Okay, you, if you could, okay. So eventually you'd be evicted because you're taking something that's not fair. I don't know which camera looking. So pragmatically, you can't do whatever you want, even without a free will, because you're going to end up in without a house, without a job, without money. You need money pragmatically. Uh, people have to treat each other fairly, and then, but fundamentally, you're going to still be innocent. But pragmatically, if you do whatever you want, you're going to end up in jail, psych wards, or homeless. I mean, if you stop, I mean, it's just it's not a pragmatic solution. So we have to, we have to make very clear the difference between pragmatic and the fundamental divine level. 
Exactly. So the idea is we don't have a free will, but our actions, our decisions have consequences. In other words, like, yeah, if, if we um, say something, if we're hurtful to another person, if we say something hurtful, mm -hmm. if, if we do something hurtful, we have laws, we have rules, we have other people are going to react to us. You know, and because like this is important because like a lot of we have to c keep a society for practical, logistical, conventional, pragmatic reasons. I mean, we can't all live with people just running around doing whatever they want, saying, I don't have a free will. That's great. Go, you know, you'll be in jail talking about that. If you don't mind being in I mean, there's, it's all conditioning. So there's classical and operant conditioning. So if you take that attitude, I don't have a free will, I'm going to do whatever you want. Guess what? You're going to end up somewhere that you probably don't like. And you'll be conditioned out of it. It's, it's, it makes perfect sense to me. I don't know. Exactly. And some people... Again, if I had a free will, I could explain it perfectly. I don't have a free will. I can't choose the exact words at this moment to make it even clearer. So that's proof right there that free will is an illusion and a myth because otherwise I would be able to explain it the first time around perfectly. Exactly. And what happens, like, the more times we explain this, the better we get at explaining it. And what is that? That's conditioning. Or I hear somebody else te explain it better, words I haven't used. Uh, you know, I see it on TV, you, you know, then I can be able to explain it. But, you know, I'm trying to tell you it's a difference between pragmatic and fundamental. Right. And some people will take the fatalist position. Some people say, what does well, that, mean? that means like, well, if I don't have a free will, then what's the point of anything? What's the point of getting up? What's the point of you going to You can say work? that about a movie or a book. It's already pre-made and done. And why, why read it or watch the DVD? Why not just skip to the end scene? And also, like, the, another answer to that, uh, Sam Harris had this in his book, like, you try, try, like, not getting up you know, in the morning. Try not doing something. Try saying to yourself, all right, You'll I don't get very to hungry. Yeah. You'll have to go to the bathroom. In other words, we can't but do stuff. It's on autopilot, most of it. I mean, you get up, you eat. Yeah, exactly. I like this subject. Uh, actually, we didn't talk about it that much. If you don't have a free will, why would anybody do anything? You know, why wouldn't people just do... That's the big fear, that if once we teach the world they don't have a free will, that everyone's just going to do whatever they want. And that's why... No, but that doesn't really mean you have to have a free will. That doesn't mean that at all. It just means it's easier and more practical and logistical to act as if you have a free That's what my book talks about. You're reminding me. Exactly. You act as if you have a free will for conventional, logistical, useful. There's a great utility in what's practical. But fundamentally, where we don't go to hell or heaven because our lives cannot be judged will, will not exist. So why we don't just do whatever we want, it's not practical. Exactly. Things have consequences. Another thing, a lot of people are afraid, well... If everybody understands that free will is an illusion, yeah, people are going to want to try to do whatever they want. But why, why aren't they? One, they're going to recognize that things have consequences. Two, we have a moral imperative. We have a basic Hedonic, more. No, uh, all right, let's go with the hedonic. Because it won't be very pleasurable for you. Say you don't have a free will and you tell your landlord, I'm not paying the $3,000 a month rent this month. Because I don't have, you know, and he'll say, why not? You owe it to me. It's not fair. You made it. I don't have a free will. And you hang up. How is that going to be pleasurable when a lawsuit comes, he evicts you, you end up homeless? That's the, the conditioning model will not work. You're, you, if you start doing whatever you want and not paying bills, you're going to have to pay the consequences. And that's not going to work right. unless you want to be homeless. That's a different conditioning model. Some people don't mind. You know, they like it. I don't know. They don't want the burden of a rent. I don't know. But if you go to a store and, you ha and you're at the checkout and you say, you know, you're at Food Emporium and you have... $30 worth of groceries, you just say, I'm not paying. Oh, why not? It's not up to me. I don't have a free will. Well, guess what? You're going to be accused of shoplifting and end up in jail. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. All right. So we we pretty much covered that, like... But that's know. a very good topic because our opponents always will go into that. Oh, We're right. learning for... This is our third, only our third... Yeah, I'm learning now that that's going to be the biggest problem that we're going to face is someone saying, if you teach the world that there's no free will, you guys are going to anarchists and going to cause oh, chaos yeah, and everyone's going to be running around naked and having sex in the street and all these other things. That's not true. That is not true. All right. So like, but fine. stick with that topic. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, here's the thing. Now, let's say everybody finally gets that free will is an illusion. Which isn't that hard to get. Everything's moving. Not, not, yeah. Nothing's up to us. How are things going to change? How are like, how are, how, how, for example, like when we do something wrong. Different vocabulary will have to be invented is what I'm writing down. Okay, well, for example, like... Different, we, different obituaries. The language will change. Under free... The, the universe compelled me to do this instead of I did it. Right, or uh, let's say we do something wrong. Everybody's... Uh, that's almost like... The, the universe definition. compelled me to do something wrong. Different language, again. Yes. We're learning and, this on the fly. And the thing yeah. is, all right, all right. 
under the free will illusion. It would be we, I did this. We do something yeah. wrong, yeah. and we feel guilty. We're taught to feel guilty. The church teaches us to feel guilty. Our parents teach us to feel guilty. And when we feel guilty, it's like we're punishing ourselves. We're making ourselves feel bad for what we did wrong. Okay, that's under the free will perspective. Perspective. We get that free will is an illusion. What happens? We don't feel the pain of guilt, but we still have a conscience. You know, we still, in other words, like if I... Right, I, right, that's true. If I just, That would be the morality imperative you were talking about. Yes. So if you can do whatever you want, but you don't feel it's right to steal, you still won't. Exactly. In other words, like... Because it's not fair. It's right. a fairness imperative, right. The guy selling the hot dog, it's not fair to him if you just take the hot dog and run away. He owe, you owe him the $2. And he, 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 yeah, even with, without... Pragmatically, yeah. Yes, we, we have a conscience. In other words, like, so like, just, just because we understand that we don't have a free will doesn't mean that we're going to abandon our conscience. Our conscience tells us right from wrong. See, there's no script to the show. This is the first time I've actually talked about this, live or otherwise. Yeah, we're going to have to really figure out the two of us and whoever else comes on a show. If there's no free will and our opponents start saying, well, now you're promoting chaos and everyone's going to do what they want and it won't make sense we're going to have to really fine-tune how we debate that because it oh, doesn't yeah. mean that at all yeah. but it's not clear with our vocabulary exactly how we're going to word that we have to be very careful and we and, and perceive fair exchange of energy is the rule or perceive and, fairness yeah and part of it is going to be it's going to be changing not just our vocabulary but our syntax in yes. other words like when right under right. the free will perspective I did something wrong. You did something wrong. Like, instead of saying you did something wrong, you'd say to the person, hey, the universe made you do something wrong. How fascinating. Yeah, that's different. Yes. You were compelled. Yeah. Why do you think the universe made you do that? Right. It's, it's a completely different paradigm, a completely different way of thinking. All right. Now, let's go to an example. That's like, very good, yeah. A lot of times, let's go with it. But you won't condemn the person to a life, an eternity in hell. They did something wrong because they're bad programming, bad conditioning, Poor training, poor timing, but you're, you're not going to spit on him and, you know, throw it like the Chicago Cubs fan who reached over the railing and screwed up that 2003 baseball game. It could have easily been you. So it'd be much more compassionate that anything that happens to anyone could have just as easily been you. So you could see yourself and other people much, it's much more compassionate. And you want to know something? Yeah, that's right. When, when you say that, that reminds me that. Just a faded role. Like people, a. People like often play, say yeah. to themselves, people, how many times have you heard the expression, there but for the grace of God go I? Something In other like words, that, yeah. yeah, when somebody does something wrong, we're lucky. We're lucky that we weren't fated to do something wrong. If I had a free will, I would have, would have known exactly what you meant, but I, I, I'm not conditioned to ever, well, I never heard that really before. All right, so uh, here's another that's, one. No, I'm just saying, that's proof that I don't have the cause to know what you really meant by that. Right, I'm well, just, yeah. an another, another statement that's similar is like, you know, how many times have you heard people say, you know, well, that person was doing the best they could. I'm doing the best they could. People do the best we can. Yeah, I like that with all the individual pressures. Right. And 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 the, the, in there. the significance of yeah. this is like people Social may, status, people all kinds may of say they believe in free will, but when they say there, but for the grace of God, go I. Or, oh, I know what you mean. It's all in God's hands. Right. Or people kind of God get it. willing. Yeah, those expressions, are, they're, they're, they're examples of people actually getting that we don't yeah, have a free will. Yeah, doctors say to you, we did all we could, it's in God's hands now. They take it both ways. We don't talk enough about free will flip-flopping, which is a wild epidemic menacing our society, that people take free will thing, you know, whatever's convenient for them at the time, they'll either say, I did it or God did it. It's like they're not consistent. It's double talk, it's hypocritical, it's flip-flopping, you know, like... Uh, like Al Gore said, it's an inconvenient truth. I mean, you can't just take something whenever it's, it's, it's... It may be a very inconvenient truth to people that they don't have a free will. You can't just take it conveniently whenever you feel like it. It may be inconvenient. That, that's the biggest thing, but you do not... I don't mind if you, if you say you have a free will, you have it all the time. And if you don't have a free will, you have it all. Don't, don't be telling me, I did something good, I deserve a raise or a medal, but I did something bad, it was God. I mean... It's one or the other. Exactly. And, and, it's crazy. And what is the institution that promotes that kind of a crazy thinking the most? Religion. Because what happens is like religion. Criminal justice. Well, but therapist. Religion, religion will say like, if we do something good, okay, religion, the basic religious Christian, Judaic, and probably Islamic also uh, teaching is if we do something good, we're supposed to remain humble. We're supposed to thank God. Yeah, that's okay? the other side of the story. Thank God. Yeah. Feel gratitude. But if we do something wrong, in other words, if we do something good, it's God's doing. If 
if we do something wrong, though, it's not Any God. Any which way you slice it, it needs to be consistent. Yes. So you could say, I do things good, that's God's grace. I do something bad, it's human. Or the other way around, I do something good, I deserve a raise or a medal. I do something bad, it's God. Either way, it's not consistent. It has to be, you know... Again, therapists love to say, don't think of black and white. It's all or don't do all or none. There's gray area. When it comes to free will, it's black or white. You either have it or you don't. 100% you have it. Zero, you can't say have it 99. Point, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's incoherent. That's a very good point. Uh, you know, you it, have it or you don't, and the truth is you don't. Zero. Right. Okay. Let's talk about like. 0. 0.000 to infinity. Zero. Some That's people, what I couldn't. Can some, I make it clearer? No, no. no but, right. but the thing is, we're going to have to wait on the universe because people don't have a free will. You know, we have explained it crystal clear. I mean, like, we, you know, just the fact that everything has a cause, and even if things didn't have a cause, it's random. wouldn't Right. That explains the whole thing. And the unconscious if on a bunch of other reasons. Yeah. If people don't get it, it's because they've been so thoroughly conditioned by the church, by, right. by school and Their all. Their parents, whatever, commercials. Right. So we have, to, we have to wait it out. Okay, now. Newspapers, heroes, devils, evil, yeah. All right, now. Some people, there are a lot of people in the world who think they're better than other people. They go around, you know, you know, with arrogance. You know, I'm just like a like a sports star, or whatever. They feel that they're just like, you know, that they're that they're better. That they become arrogant, you mm -hmm. know. So like now, I know that we have different. Like for example, a sports star has better abilities. They're better at catching, throwing, or whatever at baseball. But like, with with the illusion of free will. When people are better than others and whatever, that will promote arrogance, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, pride, haughtiness, whatever. What happens when they begin, when they understand that, wait a minute, all right, um, they don't have a free will, so what happens, you know, from that understanding? There's still a market rate for their services, though. They might no, get absolutely. paid. I mean, A-Rod, he could say, look, I hit 37 home runs last year, I batted this. This guy gets paid $18 million. I deserve 19 million because I'm I'm getting more ratings and this so there's still a market rate a fair market value for everything that you do so I don't see what the problem with I mean that doesn't mean there's free will that's just saying people want what they perceive as fair for them to get and they have no choice but to go for that right and, and so the that's the unfree will my book talks about but I you know I can't really take credit for it because I was chosen to write it. But well, I would like to get paid to scale for it. I'm entitled to that. I'm sorry. Thing. If, we if it's a, making a greater good for a greater number of people, I, I want to be paid to promote the work. Right, I'm so, entitled to what I feel is fair. So here's the thing. If we have a market system that pays us according to our like value to the market, it's, it's, then that it's makes sense, It's a mandate right? from the universe. But, it's an unfree will you, system, yeah. Right, but you, then you have a sports star or an athlete. Or he has or, no choice but to ask right. for what he thinks is and fair. They go to a party, all right, so they're getting paid a lot more for whatever because like, the uh, society values their services. But then they go to a party... And, like, instead of being arrogant, thinking they're better than everybody else at the party, they're going to feel that they're just equal. Or, like, you know, for, for basic, like, relational purposes, they're well, going they to be Well, they might humble. feel more attractive than somebody else. Right. But, but, again, even, like, there's a lot of, like, very attractive, beautiful women out there, beautiful people, right? They're, they didn't make themselves beautiful. They're, like, you know, they were created But they still, they, they have a perception of, and they have an unfree will of what they feel they have to do to get what they feel is fair because they feel more attractive. No, I mean, no, what I'm saying is like, you know, excuse for, me. for example, like if a person is more... Uh, four minutes, it's a complicated thing. So let's right, wrap right. this up. Let's, so anyway, George and I, we run the show in Manhattan. We have four minutes. Let's, we're done now. Okay. Right. Unless we want to do another one or we don't have time. <laughs> no, no, we're, so right. we think this show is important because we could go on and on for hours and we've done it about why there's no free will. And we think that we're, we, this movement needs to be out to the main street. Absolutely. I mean, this cable stuff is for the birds. I mean, Time why? Magazine, what the hell? Okay, yeah. Time Magazine has to do a, a cover story on this. Well, the cover um, stories are coming out. New York Times has to come out with more stories. They have it. If you go to uh, my website, causalconsciousness.com, just Google Exploring Illusion of Free Will, I just put up over the last week, there's about 20 uh, articles refuting free will in major it's newspapers, all coming out. major magazines. And, and just think, the more, upset, the, year the more so. upset they are watching this, the more right we are. They're probably so threatened by this. Don't be upset that you don't have a free will. You know why? They're probably, people watching this are going to be up in arms over this getting bigger and bigger because it's threatening something about them that they're used to right. and, and enjoy. And what it's threatening, it's threatening people's arrogance. In other words, people, mm. we want to say to ourselves, well, I did good. So like, you know. Oh, yeah, right. People with me. good lives are going to be more threatened. Like the poor people who have no lives might be more 
they're more tempted to i see what you're saying but, when, yeah right but just the idea is like you don't have to think that because like you know instead of but they should just want the truth really it doesn't yes. matter if, if you're religious you don't have to give up your belief in god you just have to understand that rather than our being responsible for what we do god is responsible for everything god is responsible for the good and if you do. don't believe in god you were conditioned not to i mean it's all still has a cause Yes. If you're watching the show and say, I don't believe in God, that's great. Just admit you have been a conditioned belief that you weren't you know, born with. You started to believe it because it feels better for you or best for you to believe that. So I believe what I believe because it feels best for me. And same with you. If someone doesn't believe in this show and thinks we're crazy and nuts, then, that, then come on this show and I'm going to tell you how that's a conditioned right. response. And again, some people say to themselves, you know, it feels so strong that I have a free will. You <laughs> don't, it doesn't feel like you have a free will. It feels like you have a will. That's a very key point. In Feelings words, aren't facts. I used we, to feel Santa Claus was real. This isn't about exploring the illusion of, of, of choice or yes, will. Yes, brilliant. This is, ex, this is exploring the illusion of I'm going to give you the choice, last minute 45 will. all to yourself now. I'm not going to say a word. Watch this test. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. I'm going to do a commercial. So go ahead. We're on here in White Plains every Thursday. We're going to try to go to other markets but like um anel is the producer of our manhattan show called no free will we're on every wednesday at 11 o'clock in manhattan it's a call-in show all right so if you live in manhattan it's on time warner channel 56 if you're not in manhattan you can still catch it because they stream it live on the internet call us tell us why help us explain to the world why you believe that we don't have a free will why you understand that we don't have a free will and if you believe that we have a free that we have a free will call us up on that show we'll explain to you i'm if out i of had stuff. a free will i would have kept quiet like i promised <laughs> well no because you're <laughs> i can't help myself I, well, it's, uh, it's good because like i was I'm making a point by doing that absolutely so i'm anel vale i'm going to be quiet now for the next minute see if it can be done all right what else this is the biggest thing anel and i are revolutionizing human consciousness okay we're the only ones doing this full time sam harris best time three time best selling new york times author he did the world a great service by publishing his recent book march 3rd free will okay and then jonathan pierce jonathan pierce is is a, a teacher in in england he he wrote I have to say, I have to admit, it's a much better book than mine, okay? He explains why there is no free will so well, all right? But these guys, they wrote a book. All right, so basically we're doing this. Yeah, Chris Abbott wrote a book. This is my book. You can catch my book. It's, li it's <laughs> free online, okay? You can watch. I'll read for free. This guy, now, Gazaniga, he, like, is the father of cognitive viruses. That I wouldn't recommend that book because, like, he... He, Kazanica, <laughs> believes that we're ultimately more responsible. It doesn't get really good. All right, so we're going to be back next time on Exploring Illusion and Free Will to help you understand why free will is illusion. Thanks for watching.